I'm going to show this list. This, this was a list um, your team provided of your micro apps. Okay. And this was a fascinating concept for me in terms of micro apps. So these are all features or micro apps that are available to literally plug and play that you've got right there. Gift cards, e-commerce, ratings, calendars, all these, you know, like you've got clones. Like if I wanted to do something like with Uber, it's already there. And we know lots of uh, companies offer sort of apps in a box where you can, you know, download a, like a package, but then you have to set up your own servers and, you know, do all this stuff, but it's all here. Web3, connect your wallet, NFT stuff, Netflix clone. These, this is very enticing in terms of, you know, integrating Apple Pay, Google Pay, time zones, all this stuff, Airtable, like table, et cetera. I was looking at it just kind of, you know, I started to drool a little bit because these are all the toys that, you know, I could potentially play with. Explain, how does the whole micro app thing work? Work. What was in your mind in terms of creating micro apps? Like, like explain it to founders out there the value of the way that you're approaching this with micro apps. Yeah, so the idea of uh, sharing code is not new, right? But what we see in the market is something that doesn't work the way we anticipated. Like if you look at the signs, nobody creates a formula again. Like if somebody makes a formula in the mathematics or in the physics, everybody else uses that formula. If you don't have to make it again, right? And, and that's why we have very good progress there. But I think with software development uh, over the last 20 years, we got into a strange place where the code is barely reused. Like we have libraries in the world, but the libraries have two problems. One problem is that it's almost impossible to modify it because libraries are made in a very random way, built in a random way so that it's impossible to come in, understand that and modify it. Like you can, but it's very difficult. Like hundred developers, maybe one ever done it with one library, the rest never, right? That's one problem. The other problem is that who is building it? Like we can't build hundred or 500 micro apps or libraries because you need a lot of people. So you need people motivated. And then we have open source world. The problem with open source world is that it's a hobby. Like people have to do it in the evening. Right. And then suddenly you get children and then, you know, you move to other town and you just lose the interest for that uh, open source thing. And then once there's a bag, like half the world is crying and you're like, I'm not interested anymore. Nobody pays them. Right? It's only donations. Maybe some of them make money because they're large, but most of them don't make money. Then we thought like, all right, so we have to solve it uh, from that perspective that people who build this microbes have to be motivated and then it has to be easy to modify microbes built by others because whatever microbe you're going to use, the chance that it's going to be 100% fit for your case is zero. You're going to be changing. We want you to change it because we want you to be innovative. Like the whole mission of Mars is create innovation and the speed of innovation has to grow because of it, right? Because things go too slow. We think things go too slow. We think the progress is too slow. And, and, and suddenly uh, here we say that, uh, well, there is a huge market where a lot of talented developers just do this for a living. They're building the microbes and not like one developer building 10, but, but more like few developers building one microbe. And then every microbe is built by a team. So it's a proper business. So that's why it's, uh, you know, it's sustainable. People do it quick. They fix bugs. They appear. They they react on the on, on the support case, etc. And then and now we have like hundreds of microbes. They are maintained by hundreds of developers. And then when you come as a project, you are basically coming with your unique idea. But your unique idea can be broken down into let's say thirty five features, where thirty three of the thirty five features just fall into the category of one of the micro app we have. And it's not like you have to, you know, you you might build a better micro app than the, that the one we have because that one has been, you know, built by a team that is building it for years. It's used by hundreds of projects. It's tested. It's like, you know, it, it's really high quality and it's being improved every day. So instead of doing it all from scratch, you basically pay somebody or, you know, depending on the micro, if it's free or premium. Uh, but the idea is that every micro has free and premium version. So you use the micro app, 
and then the rest you build yourself, but the rest is just maybe 10%, right? Maybe it's 5%. And then, uh, you know, the concern you might have as a, as a builder saying that if I use a lot of building blocks, like in a no-code world, I end up by having a lot of things I can't change. And, and it looks like Frankenstein at, at the end. Like, you know, the, the whole system looks like uh, you really put things together that shouldn't be together. <laughs> well, here the idea is that, uh, well, start with that. If you have very little money, start with that, that things you know, are put together without modification and it works. And then you can just uh, dig in and change things. And now it suddenly looks different. And now it's, it, it looks unique. Now you took the microp with a lot of with thousands of hours developers put there and you put you know, some of your hours and it becomes unique, just like in science. You now you take a lot of work of the others, you put something on top of that and it's the, the new thing happened. Let me try and describe how I, the, the metaphor, since I'm not uh, technical, I'm not a coder. For me, how I saw it when you were explained to me, and you know, we've had conversations previous to this, was it's like vector graphics in a marketplace, like a photo marketplace. And let me explain, like vector graphics are different than pixel graphics. So if you went to a stock photo site, you download a stock photograph and you can size it and you kind of just use it as is. You might be able to crop it, change some colors, different things like that. But with vector graphics, you can, they, they give it to you. You can actually go in and manipulate the vectors, the little nodes and change things around and, and use that as a base, but customize it completely to you. Then you can combine multiple ones, which I do all the time. If I need an element for an interface, I'll go download the vector graphics package and I'll switch up the colors and I'll customize it. But a lot of the heavy lifting has been done and I come in for the final touches for integration and then it becomes totally my own. So what you created is like the marketplace where you can download these micro apps, string them together. And if you're going to do like a Wizard of Oz MVP where everything's duct taped together and, you know, it's janky just to get you by and validate your idea, go for it. But later on, you can dive into the code and you can integrate, customize and make your solution, your software integrated, cohesive and out there that you don't have to rebuild or start from scratch. That's what I heard. How's that? How does that uh, metaphor? I don't know if you're familiar with vector graphics and <laughs> stock images, but that's how I see it. What do you think about that? I think that was an amazing uh, sample you brought in. I never yeah. thought about that, but while you were describing, I saw myself doing that. I do that exactly. Uh, you know, when I work with with vector, or also with Figma, for example. You know, you. You just get in the elements, you just change the stroke or the color and suddenly it's yours, but you haven't built the whole thing. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly the thing. But there's one thing I, I would add there, which is like the micro apps can be used both with no code and with code. And that's the interesting part here is that basically one micro app lives in both worlds with mm. no code and, and code world, which means that uh, you know, no coders can use it in a limited way. No coders can use it in unlimited way. And that's going to be amazing part of it, right? Like one thing, like, you know, we not just went for an idea that micro can be reused in the code, which is an amazing idea from the beginning, right? You already re re remove all the need for the extra code, but now uh, you can use it both in no code and, and code, just like now doubles the, the value of the code in the micro app now. 